Hi and welcome back. This is Garima and you are listening to the Garima Star show. Well in today's episode I have with me Jehan Darwala. Born in a Parsi family, India's top racer, 23 year old racing sensation, Jehan Darwala began karting at the age of 10 in 2009. and two years later was picked as one of the three winners of Force India's one from a billion talent hunt in 2013 he became the first asian to win the british kf3 karting championship a proven winner jehan has won in every category he has competed in and is currently racing in the fia formula 2 championship which is a feeder series to formula 1 and races on the same weekends Darwala created history in 2020 when he became the first Indian to win a Formula 2 race at the Sakhir Grand Prix in uh, Bahrain. Jehan is currently a part of the Red Bull Junior program which has produced the likes of four-time F1 champion Sebastian Vettel, reigning F1 champion Max Verstappen, race winner uh, Daniel Ricciardo and Carlos Sainz and many others. He is racing for three-time F2 champion Prema Racing for the 2022 FIA Formula 2 Championship. Jehan is coming at the back of six podiums in 10 race weekends, putting him fifth on the world drivers rankings. He has already scored multiple wins and podiums in the Formula 2 Championship, making him the only Indian to have achieved this feat and will be aiming for a strong end to the season when he goes back on the track after the summer break. While he loves motor sports, Jehan is deeply passionate about cricket, table tennis and badminton and is also a fan of Chelsea FC. Thanks for joining me. It's great to have you on my show. Thank you. Yeah. Really happy to be here. Thank you. Okay, let me come straight to the questions. What have been your learnings from the racing track? Uh I have learned a lot over uh, my career in racing. I've obviously been racing over for over a decade now. Uh, I started when I was really young. Uh, you know, I think sport in general it teaches you a lot the ups and downs. Uh, you know how to handle a lot of people, how to handle pressure, uh, teamwork, uh, you know, leadership skills, all of that. I've learned uh, so much in sports that I probably never would have learned uh, throughout my school. Uh, wow. You know, it's been like a, a school by itself uh, my career so far. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot. The, the main thing is uh, I've learned is to deal with the ups and downs of. of life you know at times you feel like uh, it cannot get any worse in, in racing but uh, you know to be positive to be strong and uh, to bounce back and, you know even this year uh, i want to be fighting for the championship uh, as a team we have not performed as well as we have wanted to and yeah sitting fifth is obviously not bad but it's frustrating and i want to be fighting for more uh, yeah but again I, like now i have uh, these three weeks to uh, kind of yeah get my mind back you know relax don't not really think too much about racing and uh, and come back and fight at the top that's wonderful i mean that's wonderful i mean definitely we uh, you know it's it's a great journey and you end up learning so much uh, from this journey and as you as you said it's it's uh, so you've learned so much more than it's more it's more like a school you know it's even better than that you know life lessons and all great So, what do you think is your most important strength that helps you become a better racing driver and a bit better person in life? Uh, I think my biggest strength is I'm um, normally like really calm and like modest. I don't really let things I don't let things get to me easily. So even when I'm doing really well, uh, you know, it's just something that's part of my journey. I don't really uh, you know get overly excited and stuff. Yes, I am happy, but. You know, after it's done, I'm always looking forward to the next race and seeing what I can do better. That's wonderful. Uh, it's and it's the same when things are not going too well. I do get upset, but I don't get overly upset. So, you know, I try to keep my emotions in control at all times and and just see where I can do better than I did last weekend and and work towards the next race. Uh, you know, if you let the uh, things get to you easily, it's hard to progress and make waves into the sport. that's so rightly said to you know to be able to keep your emotions in balance it's so important you know uh, uh, when you are you know doing very well 
So even that, uh, you know, that success uh, doesn't go to your head and, you know, they say failure should not go to your heart. So you're, you're modest and you're down to earth. So that's amazing. And also keeping calm, as you said, um, on the circuit and even otherwise in life. I mean, I'm, I'm, it requires so much of patience and you and uh, I'm sure uh, keeping calm, even you, you know, you're too excited, even, you know, to be able to check your emotions at that time, I think. Uh, it requires a lot of balance. So that's that's wonderful. So what's the first thing you do in the morning on race day? You know, many athletes uh, have some fixed rituals that they do before the start of the game to get in the zone, you know. So do you also have any fixed rituals you follow before the start of any race? Uh, not really. The first thing I do is get out and go for a shower. I, I feel like it refreshes me and, you know, how early the morning is in the morning, even if it's a 6 a.m. wake up, I... I still uh, need to shower and feel fresh and ready for the day. So that's probably the only thing I stick to as a ritual. Obviously, like shower, clean my teeth and stuff. But apart from that, uh, I don't really uh, stick to a, a big ritual when I'm when I'm at the track. You know, I we have different races at different times, so it's not possible yeah. to stick to a set ritual at all times. I'm quite uh, easy going when it comes to that. And uh, okay. the main thing is when I do put my helmet on at that time. Uh, I don't want to speak to anyone apart from my race engineer and I don't like to be spoken to either. I like to, you know, have those 20 minutes to myself to focus before the race starts. Perfect. Actually, that sounds pretty amazing. So, you know, at such big, big platforms, if one is playing for a team or sponsors, you know, how does one tackle the pressure to win? Yeah, there is a lot of pressure in in in, in sports in general. Uh, you know, a lot of young people, they have a lot of sponsors, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, there's also, we, we put enough pressure on ourselves to perform at a high level. So I don't let the outside pressure get to me at all. Uh, you know, when I don't do well, I'm the first person to criticize myself. So, uh, you know, the, the team of people I have around me, you know, I've, they've been there for four or five years now. Obviously, my family is there at all my race events. But my coach, my, my mind coach, my physio, all my support staff, you know, they know you know, how to handle when me when things are not going well, how to motivate me and stuff. So it's it's definitely all all a team effort. And, uh, you know, so far it's, it's it's been working well. And, uh, you know, hopefully that continues to work well. Definitely it will. You know, I mean, you have such a positive outlook and I'm, I'm sure, you know, that uh, yourself, a big critic of yourself. So I think that really makes sense and uh, teamwork really helps. So. Okay, so what, what's your gym routine like? You know, do you have any mental training exercises that have been part of your fitness routine as well? Uh, my gym routine is normally like when I'm off season or like I have a big break between races. I do uh, three days on, one day off. Uh, normally there's at least neck training twice a week. And then it's mixed with cardio and, and gym sessions. So uh, I get around uh, five sessions in at least every week. Uh, and yeah. It's important to stay fit in racing. It's important to stay light. So, you know, it's something that I have to do. Uh, you know, cardio and running is not something I particularly enjoy, but uh, it's something that I, you know, have to do to, to remain fit and and be able to drive the car with maximum potential. So, uh, how much do you, for how long do you do the cardio? I mean, like, not that long. My sessions are normally between sixty and ninety minutes. Uh, you know, every day. So it's not like uh, hours and hours in the gym, but. Uh, enough to get uh, a good amount of work done. Are you also following any exercises for, you know, skill, uh, like, you know, to sharpen your uh, various skills for driving? Yeah, then... we have a lot of, uh, like, balance exercises, also reaction exercises with tennis balls and, uh, like, lights and stuff, which help us. Yeah. Uh, and apart from that, I also see uh, or I speak to uh, my mind coach before every, every race, basically wow. uh, once. So, just to get my mind in a, in a good place and in a uh, good routine, you know, wow. yeah, that's basically. Wow, so the, the mind coach uh, sounds so exciting. I mean, so what exactly, uh, do, you, do, you ha do you remember any anything uh, that your mind coach would, would have, you know, told you that really helped you? Uh, it can be, uh, you know, a few things, but uh, my mind coach and me, we started working together last year. Okay. And, uh, you know, she's learned that I'm not the type of person who needs too much time uh, with her. You know, a few key points, uh, a few things to remember when I'm driving, you know, uh, yeah, just to, to take my mind over and stuff. Oh. 
it's mainly to remain calm and bring the best out of me that's it you know there's not uh, too many extreme things that she says or has to say it's just okay. so that i don't overthink and i just drive to my my maximum potential perfect sounds amazing so what's the best piece of advice that you know somebody has ever given to you oh uh, my best piece of advice is uh, to try to remember to always have fun even though things are not going well uh, I obviously started racing because I enjoyed it but sometimes when 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 things don't go well you you stop to enjoy uh, you know what you're doing but I try to remember as and when I can even when things are not going well to remember to always enjoy what I'm doing and keep having fun That's so so important I mean this is something I think we all must follow and you know remind ourselves you know to have fun when things are not going well Yeah Yeah so what kind of skills do you keep working on or you know what new skills have you developed Uh I think obviously on track there's always limited driving and amounts so uh, it's more off track always to learn more about the car uh, you know every category go into the car a different behave differently the tires behave differently so more from a driving perspective I like to understand the aerodynamics the downforce uh, you know how the tires work what set up what different ways it works so uh from a driving point of view i do understand and i and i know all like most the everything but from a engineering point of view i i i'm still learning you know every day uh, new things and uh, that helps me carry forward them when i'm driving and also into my future experiences and years of racing no it's it's uh, absolutely amazing because it's so important to have a wholesome uh, you know kind of uh, you know learning and the growth growth mindset because uh, one has to definitely learn uh, the machine and uh, besides the driving there's so much more so what do you uh, do to keep yourself motivated uh i don't honestly need uh, too much like motivation i'm self motivated enough uh, you know I obviously want to go to Formula One, but more importantly, uh, racing is what I love doing. Uh, you know, I want to make a professional racing career in whatever I do, uh, and you know, I know that I'm good enough to be a professional driver. So yeah, that's definitely what I'm I'm working towards and putting my whole heart and effort into it. So apart from that, I don't really need extra motivation. I see it for myself. My father, he works, uh, you know, day in day out. He he works so hard, and uh, you know, I also want to be, uh, you know. now in a few years earning and uh, you know doing well and making a professional racing career out of my uh, my my racing that's fantastic all the very best wishes uh, to you and may all your dreams come true uh, so if you could meet your younger self who is striving to be the, where you are today what is that one piece of advice that you would like to give uh, to him because since you started very early uh, Yeah, you're still very young, so <laughs> it's not that. But you know, at the at the beginning of the you know so many years, uh, uh, the, you know, of your journey, any any specific uh, that you have learned in your journey, which you would like to um, invest invest in crypto. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking, uh, <laughs> but no, I think uh, obviously. it's it's all all a lot of lot to do with hindsight but uh, not really you know i've ticked all the boxes okay i you know i've worked as hard as i have i could over the last 10 years uh, 12 years even uh, you know i moved abroad when i was only 13 years old to pursue my career and 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 you know my goal of going to make it to formula 1 uh, i am still working hard and you know even if i don't go there at least uh, you know i don't look back and i have no regrets i i have uh, Given one hundred percent to this sport, and uh, you know, yeah. So that's how uh, how I've been trying to live, and I am still living and giving my one hundred percent. So I don't have to look back and tell my younger self that I could do anything this way. Fantastic! I'm I'm so happy to hear that. So, who's your inspiration or role model, and why? Uh, I think uh, I have a few. Maybe Virat Kohli is my uh, role model in sport now. Uh, just uh, He's obviously been at the top level for years and years. He, uh, you know, he's an excellent leader. He's an excellent athlete. Uh, you know, he he leads from the front. Uh, apart from that, you know, uh, there's so many uh, critics that he has to handle being the captain of India. But he doesn't let any of it bother him. Uh, you know, he gets on with his own game. Uh, he puts his head down, and uh, also his passion and his aggression 
is something that I really admire. You know, when he's on the field, he's a different person to he's off. You know, you can see that uh, that adrenaline and that anger in him to to do well. Uh, off track, out uh, out of sports, uh, my father would probably be my inspiration. Just um, he works really hard and and he's also just a really nice person in general. So he's very uh, uh, a person I just look up to. That's wonderful. He must be so so proud of you. I'm sure, Jehan. That's really wonderful. Wh- which racing school or course would you re- recommend for beginners? You know, wanting to build a career in the sport. Oh, uh, you know, it can be uh, even like in Bombay in Rio Racing. He has a track at Wadala. You know, I started racing with Rayman when I was uh, when I first entered into go karting. Uh, you know, he still speaks to me a lot. We we keep in touch and. Uh, you know that's the yeah it's been uh, crucial for my career and also you know even now uh, you know he's always uh, speaking to me messaging me motivating me so you know it can be as simple as the, if you're in bombay like just going to wadala and going to the indy karting track and and drive you know he has a good eye for people uh, who have potential and have talent and uh, also has very good advice of, of how you should take things up and and move forward in the karting career Okay, wonderful. And, and how's your Red Bull Junior program going? I mean, that's a that must be really um, you know very very challenging or and competitive. Yeah, it's competitive for sure. We have you know four five really good Red Bull Juniors in Formula Two itself. Uh, you know, uh, this year for sure, I've been the lead junior in in Formula Two. You know, I've since the beginning I've been leading the standings and and have had the most podiums in F two. But it is a very competitive sport, you know. They're all talented people. We're all trying to beat each other all all the time. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, we we even though we're all Red Bull Juniors, we're all only fighting for one spot that may or may not open. So yeah, it is a really competitive environment. But uh, we definitely respect each other as well, and uh, you know, try to uh, at least I try to get the best out of myself. No, that's a great attitude. I'm, uh, I'm really happy to hear that. So, what's your message to our audience, Jehan? Message to uh, your audience, uh, I would say, yeah. Hopefully, you enjoyed uh, everything I said. Uh, also, I think uh, something very important is, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, what I was told when I was younger that if no matter what field you're in, whether it's sport or education or anything you want the the main thing is to have that passion and hunger you had that you got into in the first place uh, you know i'm sure even like people at office or at work uh, you know they in the beginning they got into it because they loved it and at times it gets really hard but uh, you know you have to have that young child kind of fire and fun attitude in you at all times and that's what i try to have when the ta- when the when the tough times come you know it's not easy to stay motivated but uh, I now try to just let things come as they are and uh, keep my mind open and try to remain enjoying myself. I think even for young people trying to go kart uh, or do any sport, you you cannot expect to come into a sport and for ten years be at be at the top, you keep winning yeah. and think that's how you go to Formula One or whatever. You know, exactly. you have more downs than you have ups. Uh, you have to accept your downs. So learn from them and and keep going. Especially in a sport like racing, where there's so many things that's out of your control, uh, you don't win that often. That's why when you win, it uh, you know it tastes even sweeter. So yeah, always remember to keep working hard and enjoy yourself. Wow, that's a great uh, message. Uh, it was really wonderful. Thank you so much. Now we come to the rapid fire questions. Are you ready yeah. for that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What song pumps you up for a big race? Uh. Right now, Pepas. It's a Spanish song which I've been listening to. <laughs> okay. It's called Pepas. All right. Any favorite quote, if you remember? Yes, is the I think the lion is neither the biggest nor the strongest nor the fastest. Yet he's the king of the jungle mm-hmm. because of his mindset and not because of his his strength. So that was a pretty good one. Wow. Impressive. Your favorite racer? Right now, Lando Norris. One superpower you wish you had? Teleport. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Where will you like to get teleported? <laughs> no, just so I could like not move. Just press the button and go wherever I want. Okay. 
<laughs> your go to workout neck training your favorite comfort food dansa parsi dansa any hobbies oh uh, yeah oh sports in general but cricket table tennis badminton football but not anymore but yeah those are my hobbies favorite racing circuit spa francorchamps in belgium documentary film that inspired you the most sena your favorite book i've never read a book <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> the highest speed that you've uh, driven uh i think formula 2 car 3 and oh formula 1 but maybe 340 km an hour amazing what inspires you the most to reach my dreams and to succeed in racing one hidden talent i'm good at math good at maths mathematics yeah. okay wow yeah. <laughs> the best thing about racing adrenaline the adrenaline your favorite supercar lamborghini aventador best race memory uh i think winning in 2020 in saki in my first formula 2 race would be my favorite race memory. wow most embarrassing moment spinning on the formation lap in karting when i was starting from pole position in a world championship race okay proudest accomplishment so far uh representing my country and my family in formula 2 and having the national anthem play on a podium in formula 2 fantastic and with this we come to the end of the show thank you jehan for joining me in this absolutely amazing session and thank you all for listening to today's episode with your host garima aftar If you like this episode then subscribe to my podcast for more new episodes and a deeper dive into the world of motivation and winning psychology see you in the next one have a great day bye